Hello everyone, this is Scramble from Emotionless Crypto Trading and here we have another video presentation around the market analysis. We're going to talk about the news and things which are definitely useful for you to consider trading and being active in the crypto space. So the way the market looks like today, even from the coin market cap side, is just all green, right? Everyone is running on green, everything is just, you know, definitely in the right way as it should be on a longer period of time, not just after a extremely bearish day like we had yesterday, a bunch of decreases and a lot of the coins were suffering hard. So just remember that the change 24 hour you see right here is definitely compared to 24 hours ago. And if the price was very, very low considering a hard sell off or a sort of a more aggressive correction, then that doesn't mean we got out of the downtrending environment. If today, if the next day, you see the entire market on green, it doesn't mean you got out of the downtrending environment. So there's still a lot to go till Bitcoin is back to 20,000 bucks and then all time high once again. But that's something we're going to talk about today, as well as the entire crypto space. I'm trying to make this video short and quick, straight to the point as usually. So right there, 31 billion volume, which is not big at all. BTC dominance is floating around 33 to 34 percentage, which is once again proving that it's not really gaining any sort of um, power versus the altcoin markets, while the altcoins are not really in their best performance days. Right, so it's not really gaining that momentum as it used to be in the last months while the altcoins were suffering. Bitcoin used to collect some momentum, but at this time, Bitcoin is kind of sitting in the same area around 11,000 bucks. We've got it even below that, we've got it, you know, 10,500, 10,200 dollars, and so forth. It was even below 10,000 bucks, right? So these are things that we have to consider as well as in a comparison with the altcoins market, which is definitely jumping uh, from a higher to a higher level, considering all these ICOs, which are definitely very, very useful for crypto space. There's a lot of money going into that. Even though I can see it's more than 70 to 80% of the ICOs launch out today, they're not reaching their soft cap, which is the minimum. So they're not able to approach and to collect to gain that minimum they're requesting to get started. And it's a very, very big percentage. Now, of course, behind that, there are multiple issues, such as the limit might be too high, considering your competition, your project, your white paper, your uh, your marketing team, and so on, uh, some other details as well. That might be too high. By having so many ICOs, as an example, over the last few months, reaching tens of millions, some people think it's easy to do that, so they raise the bar extremely high, and they want to achieve a couple of millions for little projects as well, which they're not able as a soft cap. It's kind of difficult, right? So better have the soft cap at a proper size and try to go with the hard cap as big as possible. In the meantime, always try to take care of the people which are buying into for trading, not to really uh, have the prices dumping after the ICO comes out, which is very important for our industry. As most of the times, ICOs are ending, coin, you're taught you, you got it at a good price, at a discounted price, you get a lot of bonuses and all this and all that, but there's large dumpings coming out after that. If the circulating supply, if the token period of time, if the market environment is not proper, this is what happens, which is definitely affecting a lot of the traders and credibility in the ICO section, right? So there's enough talking about it, let's move over uh, the tradingviewbasically.com is where I'm running this type of price analysis on the charts, right? So today we're going to talk about Bitcoin compared to dollar for Bitstamp exchange for our candlesticks right there. And what you can see is a bunch of resistance line. These two ones are actually not resistance line. These are resistance zones, which are represented uh, between a price range that's definitely pretty active as of right now, as we were not really having many chances of approaching them. And whenever we did, uh, we have been able to take control over the bearish and uh, just, you know, have them controlling us continuously down the way. 
So therefore, no positive signals from there. Now, you see how the market was coming back over the last few hours and trying to recover from this bearish movement down the way, which was a markdown of the price. The downtrend is still active. This is something which I wanted to share with you. Even though the entire market is going green on query market cap, and some people think we're back on the 20,000 bucks uh, rally and we're gonna go parabolically and all that stuff. Well, usually things are not happening that easy when you're involved in a heavy downtrending uh, pressure, which is going on. It's definitely going on. I mean, since our all-time high, which was around December 17, right? If I'm not wrong, yes. Um, we've got more than one month in downtrending environment uh, with some recoveries as well out of it, but they were not as meaningful, right? Here we have a recovery of the downtrending environment, uh, which is a sort of a, a, a very fake signal for the ones which are not really prepared to s be patient enough. Most of the times you have to be extremely patient when there is a downtrend and the best times to entry is after an aggressive parabolic movement down the way. We've got a couple of ones, right one over here, an aggressive parabolic movement down the way, right? So an aggressive parabolic movement down the way kind of runs out of the bearish power and allows space for the bullish. Of course, usually that's meeting a very nice support zone, exactly what happens over here. And currently that's what we have as the next support zone. So we will have to consider about this 9,000, what was that, like $9,000 area up to 9,400 bucks area, right? So this is what we're having right now as a support zone for Bitcoin in comparison to the US dollar. Now on the same pattern, we do have this quite powerful downtrending resistance line approaching our support very soon. So there's gonna be a breakout. If the breakout is happening on the resistance line marked within this zone, basically within this um, circle right here, uh, of course, we will have the ability to sort of a create a sideways movement until the next resistance, which is definitely very powerful, this resistance zone right here, right? So you see that how from previous support, it has been transformed as a next resistance for our structure because we're trading below that. And we definitely need two powerful breakouts, which need a lot of volume. That's first case. It needs credibility from the entire crypto space. So that means great news. It needs the hype, the momentum to be raised. And that usually comes after a powerful sell off. Right. So a lot of the things needs to be considered when we need a such a powerful uh, breakout um, in, uh, of course, our downtrending resistance. And uh, right after that, this is happening our resistance zone, which is created out of previous support zone marked right over here. Right over here, we do have a few uh, candlesticks shadows which are representing that and a lot of these positions that kept our structure basically above, right? It definitely kept our structure to be traded above. So this was a very important pricing for us as long as we were trading above. But since that, we were able to confirm here that it's no longer supporting us and it's becoming our next resistance. So whenever we're breaking out of this resistance trending line, which is gonna happen at some point of time, and from there, we might try to get easily in a slow, slow uptrend. Of course, if we don't break out of the support earlier, right here, if a parabolic movement comes down the way pretty aggressive and the bearish is going to take advantage of the market, we're gonna break down the way and go forward below 9,000 bucks. If that happens, you definitely wanna be careful to find a good entry whenever you see a support zone. At that specific time, you wanna run market analysis because the pricing you get below 10,000 bucks for BTC is going to, in some sort of way, secure you double, as knowing all-time high is 20,000 bucks, so you, know, you kinda know you can double your money at least this year, 2018. Now, of course, a lot of the predictions are at least 35 to 50,000 dollars. I mean, I should call at least 35 up to 50,000 dollars per Bitcoin. 
Now, in order to see that movement, we definitely need a 1.3, 1.5 trillion market cap entire crypto space. Because the alts are not just going to sit and watch how the Bitcoin is going like that. Of course, if it's an aggressive movement by the Bitcoin, alts will suffer for a period of time, but they will pick up as well during the you know during the timing that's kind of left and with all the volume that's sort of a left right so this is our current situation this is the way the market looks like of course right here another resistance zone which is very powerful and that could be considered as an area all all time high always represents a resistance line and this is the way we're looking at um we'll just see how the breakout is going to happen within this zone within this triangle right it's very important to see how the breakout goes on over there but it's uh, mandatory so it's not going to be extremely meaningful because right now the crypto space definitely includes a couple of news which are uh, not on the bullish side so i'm going to talk about a news right now I've got them written down over here uh, south korea has caused a lot of the fear and uncertainty that has seemingly affected markets a great deal right so we were able to see that in the last couple of days they contributed as well with a lot of the sphere of uh, having the bitcoin uh, and the exchanges disabled should i say or blocked or banned for a couple of uh, weeks or months till they got regulated now right after 24 hours they were able to confirm that's not gonna happen right and it's definitely against uh, their rules by doing that now further digital assets prices spiked during the u.s government shutdown while traditional stocks and bonds were shaken so the u.s investor may be jumping back into the traditional markets that have begun to rise again now that's the u.s has decided to end the shutdown that's another thing that's contributing to our bearish market right because the u.s investors have the ability to participate back in their um, uh, you know digital assets investing and of course the stock market is right there active once again uh, without any sort of problems like it we were seeing in the last days now with the global markets aside regulations have been concerning a lot of the cryptocurrency enthusiasts these days which has been eclipsing market optimism this year we were not starting as we were expecting with aggressive parabolic thinking in december we were doing pretty well since mid of december uh we were uh, started to see this uh, sort of a correction happening that was expected as bitcoin was going extremely aggressive from six thousand bucks up to twenty thousand dollars in matter of a couple of weeks which is definitely nothing natural and normal and anything out of that and the correction is definitely very welcome in my opinion as a natural movement of a uh, market that's being trained so that's no problem at all now the only thing we have to see is how all the news are contributing to the bearish pressure we're having and what kind of news do we need in order to see the market uh, switching the environment and joining into a sort of at least at least let's just get into a sideways movement and from there we can start growing back again but we definitely have to get out of this downtrending environment uh, which also might have the ability to create a false uh, breakout attention there might be a false breakout in the next days out of the triangle i just showed you right so a false breakout is also an option which is not good for people which are not experienced because they might entry and then suffer because the market comes back down the way right so volkswagen chief digital officer joins iota supervisory board iota or yota as you want to name it that's a very very good new around yota uh you can see today already it's it's running on 10 percent of course many of the other cryptos are running ripple has some great news as well uh yota has some great news but definitely this is gonna pick up some great billions in the market cap as these news are representing a lot for a, um, a startup at yota it definitely represents a lot to see that support coming from uh, volkswagen's chief digital officer uh south korea is the most important crypto market after the japanese and the american one 
the South Korean won moves more money into the cryptocurrency market than the euro itself that is used by several important countries, right? So we all know their own crypt, not cryptocurrency, their own fiat currency moves more money and it's the third market after Japanese and American one. It's the third, it moves more money than the euro itself, which is definitely used by a lot of the importing countries all around the world, especially in Europe. So this are the current statistics and uh, that's right there talking about South Korean span around the cryptocurrency, which is not really going to happen in the short period of time for sure, as they were also promising in the latest news. So you see the amount of volume coming from there, which is insane. If a banning like that happens, we're going to lose out a lot of the volume. But they kind of guarantee in some sort of way it's not going to happen, at least in the short period of time. So we're going to see how that plays out. For now, we're in this downtrend involved quite heavily, right? And we're not really seeing uh, a Bitcoin uh, supported by too many bullish, right? So we definitely need a little bit of more time to see how this triangle plays out. And we do want to stay away from false signals. Make sure you do your own market analysis every time you want to do an action. And that's kind of all about this video. I'll come out over the next few days with some interviews of CEOs about interesting projects, ICOs and everything all around that. Feel free to subscribe on my YouTube channel if you think this is useful for you and it brought you some value. Then just hit that subscribe button if you want. On the other side, we've got a couple of links in the description area, such as coaching, collaboration. You can look after that if you think that's something interesting, right? A one-on-one -on -one coaching program. So once again, thank you so much for watching this video and talk to you soon.